One question we often get is, is it better to invest small sums or come into the market with a big load of money? So for example, to contribute with a monthly savings plan in stocks every month, is that better rather than coming in with a so-called lump sum? And today we'll talk about dollar cost averaging, the term that it's called when you contribute to your investment account every month or with the lump sum, which is when you move into the market with a bigger amount of money. You're listening to Investing Mastermind Podcast. My name is Sina Lundholt. And I'm Michelle Markey. So the question we often get is, is it actually better to contribute to your investment account every month, like set aside $500 or maybe $100, maybe less, and then invest every month? Or is it better to move into the market with a big sum of money? And that's what we're going to discuss today. And Michelle and I, we might have different opinions. Maybe we have the same opinion on this topic, but we'll dive into it now. So Michelle, when you get this question, what is your answer? In my personal experience, what I like to do is I tend to like having a lump sum approach. Like I like having a big chunk of money. And at a time when I think a stock might be on sale, I try to invest as much as I can. And also I do it in stages. So it's trying to take a approach of what's called a tranche or a portion of what one might like to invest in. So let's say I want to invest a thousand dollars into a stock, but maybe I divide that by four into $250 chunks, let's say, and whatever $250 can buy me of a stock that I think is on sale, maybe I'll invest like that. So that's one way I might go. And I invest a tranche at a time, like say the stock price continues to be on sale. I might continually invest at whatever time that that stock seems like it's at the price I want to buy it at. So that could be potentially every month or maybe there's many months in between the next time I'm ready to commit a portion of my money to that. But I don't always stick to uh, a hard and fast. It has to be that way. I, I kind of just go with what seems like it could work. And sometimes it doesn't work. And sometimes it does. And another thing that I do is a little bit of dollar cost averaging with my retirement account that's associated with my workplace. It's called a 401k. And that one, I have no choice but to kind of dollar cost average into the stock market where every time I have a paycheck, they take out some amount that I contribute to my 401k. And that's automatically invested in the S&P 500 index fund or another mutual fund that I might be signed up for. So whatever that is, I'm doing dollar cost averaging by default. So so that's what I, I kind of do personally. If I can control it, I like going in with a lump sum. But with my 401k, it's dollar cost averaging. Mm, that's actually an interesting view on, on your retirement account. I haven't thought about it like that, but you're actually right that most people through their retirement account is most likely to some extent dollar cost averaging, whether it's in funds, ETFs, like you mentioned there, the S&P 500 through a mutual fund or ETF, or, or whether it's your retirement portfolio manager that picks stocks or bonds for your portfolio, it is to some extent actually dollar cost averaging. So that's a very, very interesting thought. I actually didn't think about that. And I also appreciate that you actually talked about how you're buying in portions, in tranches, and also further explained that, you know, it could potentially be the same week or month, or it actually could be spread out, you know, depending on the stock price that it actually has reached this margin of safety price that, you know, Buffett is often talking about. And for myself, I can only say the same thing that I also get into the market with a large sum of money when my wonderful business is on sale. I want to make sure that I get that business for a great price. So I'm ready to move into the market with a large sum of money. And the way I used to do it when I was paid a salary, now I'm a business owner, so it's a little bit different. But when I was paid a salary, I would put 20% of my salary 
into my investment account and then wait for the market to actually move down so that I could move in with all the savings that I had saved in my investment account and do exactly like you did. I also do four tranches, four portions, and I've experienced times where the market went up so fast that I only was able to buy two portions. But of course, the ideal scenario is that you move in with four portions. And the idea is that, for example, you buy the first tranche at, let's say, your margin of safety price is $100 for the stock you move in at that price. And if the stock falls to, let's say, $90, then you're happy because you're actually able now to buy even more of this wonderful business, but at a cheaper price. And then if the stock continues to move down, you buy yet another tranche, or even if it moves up again, you know, before it goes back to margin of safety price, you buy some more portions. But let's talk a little bit more also about dollar cost averaging. So dollar cost averaging is an investment strategy, which you contribute money into your investment account in intervals. Like for example, every month you contribute some money into your investment account and some of them, you know, have automatic systems. So they invest in that fund that you tell them to invest in automatically, or maybe you do it manually every month. And the idea is that you sort of save through investing. And the question is, is that a good idea? Is that a bad idea? Do you have any opinion on that, Michelle, on dollar cost averaging? So I think dollar cost averaging can work for a lot of people. If you're the kind of person who doesn't want to have to think about what the stock market is trading at, and let's say you just want to invest, like you still want to contribute and be part of, say, the American growth story of you generally believe in American companies and you want them to succeed. So whether you buy the stock market at all time highs, like around now at the time we're recording this, it's in the springtime of 2024 and the stock market is pretty high up there. So you could be paying a lot right now, but then maybe when the stock market goes down a little bit, you could be paying less for the stock market. So on the balance, it averages out because right now you're contributing, let's say $100 a month and you're buying it at peak prices. But then if we have a recession or a stock market crash, you'll be buying it at a fraction of the all-time highs, like some percentage lower than it had been. And on the net, you might be just okay. So the chances are you will contribute and buy into the stock market, whatever the prices are. And hopefully it doesn't all go up in flames at some point, unless we have another great financial crisis, which is always possible. But if you just want to steadily contribute and not really pay attention to whatever the stock market is at right now, it's generally okay. And a lot of people do that. There's nothing wrong with just kind of trusting the market if you don't really want to pay attention to it. But if you do want to pay attention to it, you might be a little choosier like Sina and I are, where we might not always want to contribute at all time highs. If we can help it, we might want to contribute only when we think either certain funds or certain stocks could be more on sale, which is what we call that margin of safety that Sina was mentioning earlier. It also really depends on which fund that you're investing into. So usually Warren Buffett says, you know, invest into the S&P 500 if you don't want to think about it, just like Michelle just mentioned. But, you know, what I also see is that people would put their money in all sorts of funds with all kinds of speculative stocks inside the fund. And if you want to do dollar cost averaging, I definitely encourage that you you know, go the safe way and do like Buffett suggests to invest in a fund like, you know, that's tracking the S&P 500, which is at all times the 500 best performing stocks in the United States. That's kind of the easy way to explain that index of the stocks. It's 500 stocks. So it's, you know, all kinds, it's grocery stores and weapons and <laughs> chemical plants and 
all sorts of things that's in that in those 500 stocks it's like a big basket of all sorts of companies but you're always investing in the 500 best performing stocks in a growth country like the United States and that's why Buffett mentioned that that is a safe bet like there's been a lot of research done with DCA and where they've tracked okay so you know if if you invest in other funds how does it perform and oftentimes it does not perform well it's you know even if you would have put a big portion into the fund at a time where the market was not as high as now that would have done better so it really depends to a large extent on the fund that you're investing in i find that interesting what you just said about how some studies have shown that results with dollar cost averaging might not be as good and i think it depends which kinds of funds and kind of on average maybe what period of time someone was invested in some of those funds so uh, of course we can never time the market that well and that's what dollar cost averaging helps with is like you can never predict where the stock market will be so instead of timing the market a lot of people can just rest assured with doing dollar cost averaging. And that is where if by and large, if you just dollar cost average into the S&P 500, there are studies that show that that was better than if you keep jumping in and out of the market. Like when the stock market's going up and you buy a lot into it because you're like, oh, it's going to go up. My funds are, are going to be worth more. And if you sell out because you're scared now that's going down, you're doing exactly the wrong thing. So in order for dollar cost averaging to work, it requires that you stick to the strategy for many years. Like you can't just one day decide, let me do dollar cost averaging, then the next month change it to lump sum and go back and forth. Like at that point, you're not gonna get the benefits that dollar cost averaging can give you. So in order for it to work, you have to stick with it for a long time. Yeah, and that's a great point, Michelle, because again, studies have shown that, you know, with human nature, what even with dollar cost averaging, that what people do is that while the stock market is moving upwards, people will continue to put money into, you know, the investment account every month, put in the $100, $500, whatever sum it is. And when the market is going down, people panic and then they stop the payment plan. So they don't invest in stocks when the market is down. And then they start putting money into their investments again as the market starts moving up. And that's one of the things where if you do dollar cost averaging, just like Michelle says, you need to stick to it and you need to do it whether or not the market is up or down or going sideways. You can't panic and then not do it when the market is down. And that's just where many people psychologically make the mistake of stop the payments when they get scared. So with dollar cost averaging, you need to continue. You need to save even when the market is going downwards. Yeah. And the way to also think about it, to if it might help people to not panic so much, which it may or may not because... You know, we say it now logically, but then when your emotions are at play and the adrenaline is rushing and you're seeing your nest egg go down incrementally and you're or or go down in a hurry, it can it can be hard to stick with a certain strategy. And I know it's happened to me where I felt lack of confidence in some of my stock investments that I ended up sometimes selling out too soon. Like I didn't sell at a loss but I didn't stick to my own strategy, even though I thought I did my homework and I invested at a certain price, but then the stock kept going down. So it made me doubt myself. And then I thought, I just want to break even. So as soon as the stock came back and it broke even, then I sold out. But then I didn't imagine that the stock would keep going up. So I shot myself in the foot by reacting to my emotions of, oh, I made a mistake. I should just get back to break even and then I'll be happy. But then I realize I'm now unhappy at myself for selling too soon. I should have had more faith in my investment. So it's the same thing with if you do dollar cost average investing or if you do investing in a lump sum, 
either way, we have to find a way to get ourselves to stick with these things and not second guess our decisions. You bring up a good point also in what you're saying, and it is absolutely just human behavior to not feel comfortable when everybody else is running towards the exit and then you need to stay and stay put. That's counterintuitive. So it's very, very natural. And what you have to do in case you stop the payments and panic is you need to forgive yourself. And then next time it happens, you need to try to, to stick with your strategy. So one way I'd like to to also talk about how you can track whether the stock market is up or down or where we are if you want to do dollar cost averaging and you know if you want to see how the stock market has performed over time is to look at the Schiller PE ratio and it's something that we've discussed in previous shows but in short this is Robert Schiller, an economic professor at Yale University, Nobel Prize winner. So he has made this CAPE ratio, also called Schiller PE ratio, where he tracks the S&P 500 over time. And the average PE ratio for the past 100 plus years is 17. So you could say PE ratio of 17, that's kind of the average Schiller PE ratio and right now it's at 35 so double from 17 and that means you know the S&P 500 right now is expensive and you can use that knowledge to say okay now I know they're expensive right now I'm still going to do my dollar cost averaging but what you could do is also you could use the Schiller PE and if you wanted to invest in the S&P 500 when the market is down you could wait until it's at 17 and then come in with your lump sum that could be another strategy if you really want to invest in the S&P 500 instead of doing the stock picking and another maybe additional idea on what you just said is you know we can't know if the stock market will ever go back to historical averages of the PE being at 17 Maybe this is a whole new world of we're always going to stay stuck at this overexpensive plateau of the Schiller PE remaining elevated for the rest of time. Who knows? I don't know if it's sustainable or not. Some people might say we're at the beginning of a bull market. So if that's true, then the stock market will just continue to stay overpriced for the foreseeable future. So you might not want to wait like it can be really frustrating sitting on the sidelines with your cash and you feel like you're missing out. Everybody's making money and you're just sitting there like someone twiddling their thumbs and, and other people's stock market portfolios are up and you, you could feel like you're missing out. So maybe what you could also do if you want to sort of achieve both aims, you won't get as high of returns as if you waited until that moment that the stock market crashed because who knows, you might be afraid to to really contribute all that money and buy at the bottom. You don't even know if that's the true bottom yet. So what you could do is potentially dollar cost average, like every month contribute, but also save more, have another bit saved up that can serve as an additional lump sum that if the market does tank and you feel confident, you can come in and you, you can press that buy button, even though it seems really scary, like you see everything in red and it seems like it's going to keep going down, but you just have to hold your breath and press buy, no matter how low it seems, even if it goes lower the next day and the next few months after that. But then at least you can feel like, okay, at least I bought some at a lower amount. And then you just have to have faith that it's going to go back up again someday. You know, the reason why I don't use dollar cost averaging and I'm not index investing is because I'm not the type of person that likes to hope. I'm the type of person that likes Warren Buffett strategy. I like to plan. I like to have a greater probability that stocks will go up in the future. So I do my homework. I barter my margin of safety and those kind of things. That's what I like. I do not like to cross my fingers and hope for the best. I do like to take responsibility for my own wealth, for my own you know, money and do it like that. So um, yeah, that's my opinion. But it's not everybody who wants to, you know, spend hours looking into businesses and finding wonderful businesses. So I do understand why, you know, the easier pick is to go with 
a fund and dollar cost average. So at least you make sure that your nest egg grows and not just, you know, sit in a savings account and get a very low rate of return. We're coming towards the end of the show. Michelle, do you have any final remarks? Yeah, I think there's no right or wrong way. Like as you heard Sina say, we want to have more of an assurance of the choices we're making. So we try not to leave our stock market fate up to chance. But there's a lot of people out there that you, you may not be ready to have that level of commitment to looking into stocks. So it's okay too. You know, a lot of people are busy. This might not be the most exciting thing that they think about every day like we do. So, you know, it's okay if you just want a dollar cost average. So we hope that no matter what you do, that you feel like you're making the right decision for you and your family. And that's all you can do is you just make the best decision you can with the information you have and try not to regret your decisions later. So with that, that's all I got for today. All right, till next time. If you enjoyed the show and found the content informational, we would be super grateful if you would leave us a review and follow us wherever you get your podcasts so you automatically get new episodes in your feed. We publish a new show every Tuesday. The contents of the Investing Mastermind podcast are for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. None of this is investing advice, and if you need help in your personal situation, please consult with a professional.